Think about um, a staffy, uh, the two breeds. Whenever you get a crossbreed, you've got to consider the two breeds, right? Think about a Staffordshire Terrier or Staffy Amstaff, whatever it is that you're going to be crossing, or whatever the cross it is, yeah? With a large Molossa like Preza Canario, right? Think about putting those two dogs together and what are you going to get? That's the first thing you've got to think. When you study those breeds, when you study the Staffordshire, uh, Staffordshire Terrier, you study the Preza and you've come up with, you, you understand what those breeds are about, um, and then think about them both together, you're going to get. A very high drive dog, potentially a good guard dog, but not as obviously it's not going to be as big a dog as a Preza Canario. Um, but it's, it might have the same temperament. Like for instance, with my girl, she came out a lot more mastiff than Staffordshire Bull Terrier um, in temp in temperament. <coughs> How much experience have you had? To have a dog like this, you have to have some experience of other dogs. And the reason being is because they will test you. Most big, strong dogs, most guarding type dogs will test you at the, when they're teenagers. And my dog, my dog did. If you're good with strong dogs, right? You can be. You will know what you're doing as a single person, as a person on their own, right? But if you've got a family, there's a lot of work that goes into keeping this type of dog. They are very high drive. They have suspicious of strangers. They will test you when they're teenagers. They, when they get older, they are difficult to train. When they're puppies, all right, but even when they're puppies. It took me six months to stop Bella from running after joggers and bikes and biting them on their on their heels. Six months as a puppy. Um, you've got to take into account, although she's not an aggressive dog, she's not happy, she don't like strangers. That's just natural because she's part Mastiff. Um, you've got to take into account all these things. Are you are you going to be you are you going to have the time to train a dog like that? Are you going to have the time to put into a dog's exercise like that? Because they need a lot of exercise as well. Are you going to be able to? Are you going to be sure that she's not going to push over your little kids when she, um when they um when the kids are mucking about with your dog, putting their hands in the dog's mouth and all that? Are you going to be certain about all that? I mean, obviously you don't want that to happen with your kids, but. You, you you know what I mean? So, are you going to have your eyes on your children and the dog 24-7? Uh, so, although the dog isn't aggressive, the dog is high drive, high energy. And so, it might do the wrong thing. It might push your dog child over. It might mouth your child. Well, it will mouth your ch children when it's a puppy. Because that's what puppies do. But these, these dogs are a little bit more than just your average pet, pet spaniel. So, you've got to take all of that into account. In my opinion, and remember, every dog is different. Because when you have a, when you take a dog from the litter, you 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 know you might have the more passive one. You might have the more. With my girl, she was like the top, like the um, alpha female. Might as well call it alpha female. So she was like, she would always be the one that gets the food. <laughs> I mean, she's you know she's tested my boy since she came here. Do you know what I mean? Here's a video, for instance. <laughs> My oh God, if you want to do jogging, if you want to do pulling, if you want to do loads of exercise, all those kinds of things as a single person, amazing dog. Get this dog. If you've got a family of little ch children, little toddlers, don't get the dog. <laughs> get something else, yeah.